Good evening. It's Thursday evening, the third day of October. On I'm Jerry George. With and you, I don't know. I don't know what's happening with him, Dave. <laughs> he keeps going in and out. I tell you. Yeah. You yeah, know. Awesome. Yeah. We're having some yeah, trouble with you. You keep going in and out, Jerry. We heard good evening. It's Thursday, and that was it. And okay. then a big laugh, is it right? Still like, is, it, is it still like that? Is it still that way? Well, okay. you have it's... to keep talking and we know. Okay. No, I was saying good evening. It's October 3rd. The best month of the year is upon us. Oh, oh, please. Please. Why you that is why, that's why I would pause to see your oh, baby. Please. Yes, oh, please. Please. Spare us. Upon us. All right? And so we didn't have to deal with it. Spare us. If they want. <laughs> If October 3rd is such a wonderful month for Jerry, how come it sounds like he's at the bottom of a swimming pool? I'm exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, that is where I, I have been sabotaged. So. Oh, please. No, you have, to, you have to fix up that audio. You have to fix that, yeah. Right, There's a short somewhere. Yeah. You better throw out that headphone. Yeah, that's an October headphone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Coming back. Exactly. <laughs> or maybe or maybe it is an October headphone. True I true that. I true that. I true that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I pulled back my earlier comment. I agree with you, Bev. I agree with you. I agree with you. So in the meantime, yeah, Bev, you take it away. Well, good evening, folks. Welcome to the happiest place on radio. It's Mecco Chat Thursday evening with the usual suspects. And these people are suspects. They are suspected. No, that don't sound right. They are suspects in the case <laughs> where you're looking for people who are concerned about good governance. And those of us who gather here for Mecco Chat are all suspects. They are looking for the people concerned about good governance and our names on the list. <laughs> you know, some people. Is this don't... better, folks? Is this better? Yeah. Yes, that is much, much better, sir. Okay. Yeah, take off, take. No, that's not better. Sorry, it's not. Better? No. You sure about, you sure about that? If it's not, then we have no different. Yeah, you seem to be going in and out for some reason. Mm -hmm. We hear you sometimes and not sometimes you're not. It's that nice shirt. You know what to do with it. Really loud and clear. And then the audio drops. So it's it's like the like your cable has a short. Short somewhere, so yeah. That's how it's behaving. And so you have to sort that out. Yes, yes, thanks. And here comes Richardson. Welcome, Richardson. We're happy to have you join us. We, we haven't nice we heard him yet, but we saw him log on. Well, yeah. No, I, I was actually logged on since uh, 7.56. But <laughs> <laughs> I saw 8.02 and nobody came on, so I, I said, well, let me retry. <laughs> yeah. These suspects okay. like to skate in at the last minute, you know? You okay. See Mags and George sitting there holding the fort, and <laughs> everyone else skating at a minute to eight and minutes after eight. Mm -hmm. we need to stop that, right, Margaret? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to. We need to. Yeah, so we can get together early, have a little tete a tete, drink some <laughs> or chat mugs. I know, right? <laughs> George, I hear somewhere along the way that we have a new mug. Is that, is that right? Well, I heard from John, the man behind, the mug man, that uh, he was planning another mug. And then I got an email, which I think I circulated to a number of you people, that somebody has taken the idea and come up with uh, a mug of his own, which says, uh, Dogo Day. The only difference is that they spelled Day, D-E-H. This was done in England, by the way. D-E-H instead of D-E-Y. So we'll have to wait, and you guys have to decide what, what gives with that. All right, I guess we got to pull out the dictionary and see which one is the, is the, hmm. is the correct one. No, listen, <laughs> as far as I'm, I'm concerned, anyone that John say, 
that is the one. <laughs> right, so that's the EY. He is the, uh, the yeah. DY, he yeah, is yeah, yeah. the, yeah. John started this thing and he ain't allowing nobody to steal his thunder. But if John <laughs> says D-E-H, it's D-E-H. And if John says D-E-Y, it's D-E-Y. There is only one vote in this. One. John, John's yes. vote. John's vote. That's the only one. So, and, and any any other cup will not qualify as a micro chat cup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Jerry is yeah. back. Margaret. Uh huh. Yes, we have Margaret and Richardson somewhere in Uncle Sam's country, and we have Jerry. Somewhere in Uncle Ralph's country. And Jerry is having a torrid time with his audio this evening. He wants to speak with us, but his equipment not cooperating. Yeah, so much for those October things. I noticed yeah. he's put on a crown in place of uh... I, I, I bet that 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 was that those both headphones were bought in October. <laughs> Probably created in October. Wait, 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 wait a I go off I go off there and you guys talk me behind my back. That's not nice. No. We didn't say a word about you behind your back. I heard it. I heard it. Yes, we, I heard it. We waited until it. you got back here. <laughs> even call your name. Richie, good night. Good night, Jerry. How are you doing? Very well. Uh, we can have this thing balanced out now. Yeah. What, what, what balance what, is? What, in, what balance? What is balance now? Carry on the program, please. I, I know what's balance. No, we have to think balance. You throw something in the mix. We are in the house of the suspects. We are on air talking to thousands of people. Yeah, you understand? You can't have any private joke in here. Uh, we balance. If you're talking yeah, right. about balance, the rest of us know what is balance. We balance. Welcome, Aki. Glad Aki is here comes because... Aki mm -hmm. We're even more balanced now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what is it? Margaret, what is he talking about? I have, a I have no know. idea. <laughs> Listen, I have and no I have a idea. feeling we don't want to know. We do not you want know? to know. Exactly. Smart, exactly. smart, smart, smart. Because if we know what he's talking about. Tati Martin. <laughs> wow. I tell you. I, I'm telling this, you. This guy this must be star. a journalist. He must be a journalist. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> no, I say... When I see a in action, I feel like moving to Dominica. But yeah, I'm not good. sure if I must move to Dominica before or after that. You have to, you have to go into training. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, since I, since I was chatting, let me just give, give you guys an idea of what we want to talk about this evening. And we have on the menu... A, Scandal sheet in Jamaica, in not Jamaica, Grenada. We have scandal sheet, mm -hmm. but that's for another week. Scandal sheet in Grenada. <laughs> we have Athi on the road in Dominica. And customer service week is coming up. I'm sure that we can say something about customer service week here on Mexico. So customer I service turn... week, anywhere, any region, it must be the same thing. So we'll talk. It's an international observation, so I am mm. sure that some of our countries, I know, really, I know Jamaica this time has rolled out a big thing for us, for service week. I haven't heard anything coming out of the Eastern Caribbean as yet, but I am sure come next week, we may hear, I think, or two or some companies may have something in place for <laughs> service week. So in the meantime, we go back to Mr... Jerry George, who is the one who anchors the ship, and we need him to take those topics. And what, what's, what's the latest term in, in Dominica now? <laughs> Gravitate outwards. <laughs> 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 Gravitating outwards. This region is the best in This region is the best. I tell you, we are oh, so yeah. nice. And for those of us okay. who know what we're talking about, you see, one of the candidates in Dominica, just put it in a nutshell, who just happens to be the wife of the Prime Minister. Mm. She was in a dress and she's talking about agriculture. 
that it is such such a what are the areas that they are going to be looking at you know so it has to start in her constituency and and it will gravitate outwards from there so <laughs> That has become a meme in Dominica. Gravitating <laughs> outwards. Because I don't think anybody figure out what she's talking about up to now. Yeah, you didn't, you didn't hear the news that Dominica has moved into sci fi. <laughs> You're right. Oh, I didn't hear that one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, gravitating outwards is, you know, uh, like, yes. right, interstellar, you know. <laughs> Right, oh, so that, that's what that's the beam me up, Scotty. Yeah, beam yeah. yeah, 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 no, no. me down. <laughs> beam me down, down. Scotty. <laughs> yeah. So let's well, grab the tape out let, for Right, I'm going to let Atti start this evening. We start another no, round tonight. George, George has a clip with the Atti. So he probably Right, so good. So let's put a clip with the thing and then let Atti take from there. Yes. Are you sure that George has a clip? Well, if, if, yeah, if George okay. doesn't have the clip. All right, here we go with that clip from Dominica and Arti. From those of us, those of you who are already convinced that we must get that $1.2 billion back and that we must have electoral reform. And you must be prepared to go out there, go out there, go out there. Nobody asks you, get up in the night, get up in the morning, get up in the afternoon and take your feet, take your bicycle, take your cars, take your pickups, get on your buses and go over this country over and over and over and over again so that radio will not be the way we communicate. We will communicate by reaching out directly, embracing, looking at people in their eyes and bringing them along. There are labor rights who want to see us. There are labor rights who want to be here, but they will not be here now. So let's go to them. Let's not be afraid. There is nothing to be afraid of. Dominica is our home. There is nothing to be afraid of. Everything here belongs to us legitimately. That is why that one Two billion dollars is ours. Let us go, let us get it, let us put it to work for every single Dominican so that never again will a bunch of rascals and gangsters and criminals be able to rise and take over our democracy. Thank you so much for coming. We look forward to your continued struggle. All right, guys, there's uh, RT speaking in Dominica. And just before I hand it back to you, uh, Bev, could we ask Mr. Franklin to try and get his face in the center of the screen there, like uh, the rest of us there? <laughs> What's so, your room? Uh, it's a little better. I gone too far. Yeah. A little more? Nope, too much. That's about it. That's better. That's better. Yeah. Okay. So go ahead, guys. Talk about Mr. Martin's clip and Mr. Martin's clip in Dominica. So is that he has to tell us though. Ati, you have to bring us up to date. Um, in Dominica last week, we heard the report for electoral reform was was, um, was not accepted by the government. We we also heard that the the opposition said that they were going to start on Monday um, some civil disobedience action. Mm -hmm. And it's out of this, I think, your, your, your march and your speaking came. So tell us a little bit what has been happening. Well, I, I mean, we, we heard your report, Jerry. Your report actually has been replayed and replayed and replayed. Lord. <laughs> all over. Are you serious? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, on different programs. And, uh, and so oh, um, up until last night on the, on the Freedom Party program, they used a fairly generous portion of, of, your, of your report. And so, so yes, it, it, is, it, it is that the, the Joint Commission report, OAS, Commonwealth Secretariat, and CARICOM was released last week. And um, an organization 
although it's the organization that invited the joint commission actually the report didn't really go to them in other words they have no jurisdiction on the matter on the subject matter of the report because constitutionally the only organization in the country that has anything to do and say about elections is the electoral commission mm -hmm. um, but evidently because the report the recommendations in the report because they actually um, reflected almost um, verbatim the input of civil society and the, the opposition parties. Um, the, the attorney general was commissioned to rush ahead and, and, and take the position that the government finds the report unacceptable, unworkable, and likely to cause chaos in the country. <laughs> and, um, and by that time, most people had not even received the report. The people who had met with the commission had not received the report. Um, and so people hadn't, didn't even know really what was the basis of the statement. But we subsequently did and realized that um, their objection to the report was more, was clearly raw politics, not just because of the recommendations you know, supporting the cleansing of the list and the production and, and distribution of ID cards, but probably most critically, not supporting the government's attempt over the last year and a half to find some way to legalize sending teams overseas to register people, voters in the diaspora. And the commission would have none of it. And so, in other words, that was their secret plan for stealing the next general elections. It wasn't just to fly people in because we knew, they now know that people were going to be at the ready. And I'm sorry, Dwyer is not here because St. Kitts actually led the way in, in showing how to prevent imported voters from actually getting to polling stations. You just lock them in at the airport. And so they can't go anywhere. And, and St. Kitts did that pretty well. And so, <laughs> so they realized. But they, they, had had a, hold on, but they had a supervisor of elections who was willing to hold the, the stations open. How could they get them in? <laughs> so that's another yeah, story. Then. That's another story. But but the idea, the, 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 their plan A was to go then and register those folks who, who they know had been away, some of them for over 20 years and had never ever returned. So under the law, the electoral law, they were no longer valid voters and their names should have been removed from the, the voters register mm -hmm. and so on. So having had that mat pulled out from under their feet, they resorted to really brinkmanship and, and bravado, and, um, but it backfired because I must say to the credit of all concerned, the, the Dominica public seems now to more fully understand such things as the government has nothing to do with elections. When, as far as elections are concerned, the Labour Party is just another party contesting the elections. The only responsibility of the organizations of government, particularly the Ministry of Finance with regards to elections, is to provide the funding required for the Electoral Commission to do its work. But the Constitution makes it absolutely clear that the only organization that has anything to do, say, or to, to manage elections and the processes associated with it is the Electoral Commission. And so the report had not been submitted to the, so to the Electoral Commission when the Attorney General made his public statement. So you can see the mess that they place themselves in. It's a, it's a constitutional mess. They realize that, and their favorite constitutional lawyer, Mr. Tony Astafan, had no comeback. And for days, they were bubbling and bumbling and stammering and trying to find something to say and something to do about it. And lo and behold, their, their condition was made more critical by what happened on Monday. Because what happened on Monday was very interesting. It was the, the commencement of a period of protest that would include civil disobedience until two things came to a satisfactory resolution. One of them is electoral reform. And, and the timing of the release of the report could not have been better from the point of view of that 
that movement for electoral reform because it substantiated, it supported, and legitimized the claim of civil society, the private sector, the churches, trade unions, and everybody who had come together. So people felt emboldened. And this is a critical thing, because, you know, we, we often like to think of ourselves as having, quote, unquote, influence and power in our tiny little islands. But the fact of the matter is, we are creatures of a diaspora. Our ancestors came from somewhere else. And and the the our citizens go somewhere else <laughs> by and large. So they listen to and they respond to stimuli coming from outside of the country as much as anything else. And so when those when that report came out and people got to terms with the conclusions of that report, they realized that what we had been saying was absolutely spot on. So it emboldened people. That was critical. And on the second issue, which is where is the 1.2 billion EC dollars that has gone missing? The Prime Minister concluded and, and agreed that it was here, it was collected, and he did not report on it in the budget speech, and he did not put it into the normal channels of the Treasury and Consolidated Fund. It went into some escrow account. So he, the money is there, the money exists. And he is refusing to say, where is it? How much is left? What did you use it to do? In the meantime, they are spending hundreds and millions of dollars campaigning. And, um, and the Labour Party is not on record as being an organization that has engaged in any fundraising activities of its own. So the obvious question is, where is that Labour Party getting all this money? You know, 1.8, 1.5 million dollars to launch a candidate. Mm. Remember, we have 21 candidates, <laughs> so <laughs> so it's a substantial amount of money they're using overseas artists. They brought in Julian Rogers, an erstwhile colleague of Mr. Jerry <laughs> George here, um, and Julian. You kidding me? Yeah, Julian Rogers came in and was MC of a of a show. Uh, a big <laughs> he told me everything this week. He sent me here. He gives speech in, in I go after him to make he gives speech. He sent me the speech and he turned up out there. Good. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and several and artists from outside, even the, the people who organized the road, the show, the sound, the everything were brought in from Barbados, <clears throat> which is the home base of the team that manages the political strategy affairs of the Dominica Labour Party. And um, so he he's caught, these are the two rocks and the two hard places that they're caught between, really electoral reform and explaining the $1.2 billion. It becomes even more critical because as time passes, he's trying to find a date to call the election. Right now we hear he wants to call the election on December 18th. Uh, Why? Why that which is, well, it, it's, I, I don't think it would have been his first choice. His first choice, he, he's tried three times so far to, to pick dates for the election, but every time he has a date in mind, it gets leaked, and things happen that don't appear to suggest that he, he would win the That's election. Okay. So December 18th is there because you have to understand, okay, he hasn't launched all his candidates, including gravitating outwards. She has not been launched. She has not been launched. Really? And, um, and, I mean, his own wife hasn't been launched? No, no, no. She hasn't been launched. Why? Well, uh, that's an interesting question. And, and, and uh, I, 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 would not like, I would not like to explore it publicly yet. But, um, yeah, there are some considerations. And, um, the, and there are one or two candidates who had been removed from the, from the list who have since been brought brought back on the list, one of them, <laughs> by an enticement of $950,000. And um, yeah, 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 yeah. And um, another one who was removed from the list, and these were senior ministers who were removed from the list. Um, another senior minister who was removed, we understand he, he, he was considering coming back, but I guess things in the cards didn't roll his way so he's now just re, you know resolved to accept the role of supporting his replacement that kind of thing um so it, it there's a lot of 
his his homework is not done. In other words, the, the, the dinner table is not set, which is why he cannot convene the dinner party, which is which would be like the elections. Um, then you have in three weeks time you have World Creole Festival. Mm -hmm. uh, the the plan normally would be to bring in imported voters under cover of an inv an event like the World Creole Festival. So people say, well, they're just coming home for the festival and they'll stay a few whatever and they'll vote and then they go back but that would mean that they would have to you know stay for a little while and uh, most people living and working in north america do not have the luxury of taking as much time off as would be required in this case the the so that brings us down to november the first week of november um and what's been happening is other stories are unfolding, not just about the electoral reform, which now has a, a solid foundation as a result of the John Commission's report, but the $1.2 billion issue, the money issue, there are now reports coming to our attention, reminding us that the $1.2 billion that is missing is only in as regards the, the financial year 2018-2019, one year. Ongoing research work, ongoing, if you will, forensic work by independent persons is now beginning to reveal that there may be as much as $3.8 billion unaccounted for. <laughs> now, that, this is in a country... We Wait, billion, billion? Billion, billion yeah, with a B. I, I'm not surprised, I'm not surprised. In, in a country with 70,000 people? Yeah, but yeah. in a country that has sold almost passports almost equivalent to half of its population. That's right. Wow. Which we are also gathering. So, so wow. there may be upwards of 30,000 passport holders, Dominican passport holders out there. And then there was this special arrangement with this company called Montreal Management um, Enterprise, um, which is a, 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 well, it's not Canadian. It's a company registered in Dubai, operating out of Dubai, which by the prime minister's own utterance, he entered into a special dispensation with that company, which was outside of the pale of the legally established citizenship by investment program. He created a special relationship with Montreal management, which allowed Montreal management from four years ago to begin selling Dominican passports at an undisclosed price and undisclosed, undisclosed quantities. That created a pool of money, which the prime minister refers to as his housing option. And he is using that money to hurry up and try to build houses all over the place, even on people's private lands. Today, a man went to his farm and found bulldozers clearing his farm. <laughs> oh no. With, with, oh, yeah, no. yeah, clearing his farm and opera operating no. farm. And, 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 the, and he was told by the operators and he discovered that actually this was for a housing project. There's, there's, an, there's another portion of privately held land in the vicinity of the Kalinago territory, which, which is in dispute because it was assumed all along that that land was part of the territory. It turns out that that land may not be. It may be privately held family land. And so that land, they, they have already started clearing that land. To, to build another housing project. So you, so it, and none of these projects have planning permission. None of them have had the benefit of environmental impact assessments. And like, like a couple of the hotels that are being built under the CBI program, no environmental impact assessments have been done. And some of these sites are in riverbeds, on floodplains, in areas that are entirely unsafe and uns unsuited for housing okay so but so Athi, so no hold, yes hold on Athi, because we're gonna have to go and take a break right yeah. now so sorry about that yes 
The question I want to ask going into the break, so you can answer when we come out of the break. When you're building all of these houses all over the place, what do you do for water supply for these houses and for waste? Waste from disposal. Waste. Yeah. Right. yeah. Good point. Take Good break. question. Take a break and we come back. Because your vehicle is a necessity, being roadworthy is critical. Hubbard's Motor Department introduces its new tire and battery sales and service outlet located at Building Supplies Compound in Grand Arms, close to the Sugar Mill Roundabout. Available are a wide range of competitively priced tires, maintenance-free batteries, oils and lubricants. Keeping in mind your busy schedule, this outlet is equipped to provide you with fast and reliable service. Simply drive in and you'll be delighted with your service experience. For more information, contact 4402087 Hubbards. Quality service, affordable prices. Hey, what? I just came from the land and this sign here caught my eye. What's that sign about? Someone must have asked Grenleck to move a pole. But you know, there's no space reserved on the side of the road for planting poles. So Grenleck has to get permission from landowners, and that can take a lot of time. Oh ho. Grenleck asked me to help them contact my neighbor Ben about planting a pole on his land. But Ben passed away. His children own the land, but they all live abroad. That's why Grenleck needs customers to inform them in writing at least three months in advance. Three months? All that? It seems like a lot. But think about the time it will take for Grenleck to find and get permission from all of Ben's children. And sometimes moving one pole requires you to move the pole before, the one after, plus the wires that support them on the ground. That means even more landowners to find and get permission from. Then Grenleck needs to schedule their teams and notify customers about any power outages. Well, I need the pole on the farm moved, so I'm going to write Grenleck a letter now. Grenleck, energizing our Grenada. I'm always on the move. Training, traveling, competing. So it's good to know I have Quad Bank in the palm of my hand. Introducing e-banking, one of many customer convenience services from Grenada Corporate Bank. And there's more to come. It's swift, simple, and secure. You don't know how many hurricanes will be coming this season, so you need to be prepared. At Hubbard's Hardware and Building Supply Department and the Food Fair Supermarkets, everything from canned foods, flashlights and batteries, to plywood, tarpaulin, lanterns, roof repair kits, water tanks, etc. are available. For over 90 years, we've helped you prepare for and recover from storms. Hubbard's Hardware, Food Fair Supermarkets and the Grenadian General Insurance an integral part of your hurricane preparedness plan. Alrighty, folks, we are back at the bottom left of your screen. And Dominica, there is Mr. Atherton Martin. In the middle at the bottom, Mr. Jerry George is in St. Vincent. Beverly Sinclair is in Jamaica this week. Just above Beverly is Mr. Richardson Franklin, who is in uh, New Jersey. Yours truly in the center, and uh, last but not least, Margaret Francis is in New York. Hi, guys. Beverly? Any, any comments we may want to hear from our participants? Well, while you guys not were talking a little bit ago, while uh, Arthi was talking a little while ago about uh, the elections, Somebody named Ann Thomas said, when Grenada has elections, plane loads of people going down to vote for them from New York. And then... Uh, Margaret, is it? Pardon me? Margaret, too? <laughs> yeah, no, 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 Margaret. No, 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 no. <laughs> Not me, but I do know people who did. <laughs> uh, I know quite a few who did. Arthur yeah. Langine says, that's old news, man. We all know that. People also come from Union Island. What? You, you know about that, Jerry? I need to go camping down there, boy. 
<laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I heard about that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard that Union Island thing. Mm -hmm. Anyway, take it away, man. If it, if it wasn't for people like Boris Johnson and Donald Trump, I would say we're making a mockery of, of de democracy. But, um, you know, they, they, they seem hell-bent on, on retaining the leadership positions in that regard. So, um, what, what, I, what I, to, to, re, to respond directly to Bev's question before we took the break about the, man, the management of water, the management of waste, etc., both solid and liquid waste, that is exactly one of the issues that is of grave concern. Remember, these are tiny islands. Dominica, the landmass here is larger than most of the other smaller islands, but because of our topography, water moves very rapidly from wherever you deposit it, like inland, down to the coast. S yep. Even solid waste that is deposited in the ravines as, as if you will, an informal waste disposal system for, for the population finds its way to the beaches and, and, and the coastal zone very quickly. So, yes. so when, when EIAs are not done, and when frankly planning permission is not even sought, not even sought, we have been looking for the application for planning permission for some of these hotels that are being built, that have been built. They don't exist. So this is flagrant violation, flagrant violation of the laws of the country. And, and so there's no EIA. So waste disposal, sewage disposal, grey water disposal, um, all of that, none of that is taken into account and um, because of the high rainfall in the center in, in, in Dominica, I mean, it will cause these substances and all that is in them to move r right across from the from the ridge of the central ridge of the island down to the coast where the population lives and into the coastal waters where we hunt and catch our fish, which feeds the population. So, so we, we have ignored the, the, not, it's not, this is not a long-term issue. This is a very, very short-term health threat issue. In addition to that, um, you know, the, 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 the issue of who owns these properties, who owns this money, this money that is missing, whose money is it? The way our prime minister behaves, you could swear his grandmother died and left this money for him as, as you know, as, as an inheritance, you know, because he just refuses to say how much, he refuses to say where, he refuses to even say who are the signatories on the account. When Mary Eugenia Charles was prime minister, when, when um, um, Edison James was prime minister, we all knew because they were, they reported regularly on the status of the CBI programs in terms of numbers of passports, monies earned, who were the signatories, and so on and so forth. So, so we 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 realized to get to, to Richardson's observation that a lot of this money, and given the quantum of money, there is no way that anything, any activity in Dominica or even in the entire OECS could be identified and described and, and, be, and be said to be the, the economic activity that has resulted in 3.8, 3.5 billion dollars of revenue over a three-year period. There's no activity. Can you think of one? Not even tourism gets close. You understand? So, so, so it, that money has to be moved, it has to be laundered, it has to be hidden, it has to be held by persons whose business it is to hold those monies. And therein lies the danger. Not only do we run afoul of the international financial community and all the security arrangements and all the, the, the security concerns around the movement of money and what money gets used for, you know, these days around the world, and you can see the, the state the world is nowadays, um, but but we would then have to to come up with some some explanation as to where as we say here where the money gone, and that even, even if you lease eleven super tankers to carry oil from Iran, which Dominica did, 
We leased 11 super tankers to break the U.S. and international trade embargo on oil exports from, from Iran. We did that. We didn't have the, we were not selling. Well, they might say that's where the money come from, Barty. Well, you know, well, Ali Reza Monferred is in, Monferred is in trial now in, in Tehran. You know, if you, if you go online, you will see him in his wonderfully classic pris prison garb. You know, that is the same guy who was in his three-piece suit cutting a cake, an anniversary cake with Roosevelt Skerritt in, 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 in Malaysia, Malaysia. To, cel to celebrate, you know, my, you know, the, the establishment of Dominica's presence in the, on, in, on the global, in the global financial community. So it seems to me, it seems to me that, and here is the last point I would make, because you guys need to take, take me off. Um, <laughs> the last point is this. We are enter, this is all happening while we enter an election. So you can understand that the people who are culpable, the people whose, whose constitutional, legal, and moral responsibility it is to report and clarify and answer all these things and to ensure free and fair elections and so, and so on, those people are the ones who have a hell of a lot to lose. Frankly, they will go to jail. And that's, been, that, that's, a, that's one of the nicest things that you can imagine. They will go to jail. Okay, so, so they are determined even more than ever before not to lose the election, even if they have to hijack, derail, unravel, destroy what's left of our attempt to build a democratic culture in the island. And that could mean that they will have to resort to the importation of hired operatives. Some of them are already in Dominica. Okay? Some of them are already in Dominica. Yes? How are you defining hired operatives? Well, I, I, I let your imagination run on its wildest <laughs> tracks, you know? People who know how to sing, people know how to dance, people know how to arrange dance. things so that they, what you see is not what is actually happening. People know, who know how to make things happen. I can, I can mention two names because they are regional persons who have already been brought into the mix to do stuff with the election. One of them is Charlie Jong, who now works for the government of Barbados, who used to work for the government of Dominica as the communications expert. He, he moved to Barbados. He's employed by the government of Barbados, led by Prime Minister Motley. And he is still operating as a communications resource expert for and on Dominica. In fact, more recently, the brother, the younger brother of another operative, you might have heard the, t the name Hartley Henry. Hartley uh Henry is a political strategist that has worked with labor parties throughout the region. He has sent his younger brother, Tyson okay, Henry to Dominica. He's now here. He's in the office of the prime minister, a Barbadian, now working as the front man on the communications thing. So he is the point person to Charlie Jong, who worked first in St. Kitts, then he moved to Dominica, now he's in Barbados. But the point person has been established here. And that is to manage and mismanage the, the factory producing fake news, propaganda. And that is, in the larger scheme of things, Richardson, that's one of our least worries. It is the other areas act of operational activity that present not just a serious problem for us here, but, and I keep saying to you all, what happens in Dominica is just, is like a movie trailer. 
it's a preview of what's going to be happening in Grenada, in St. Vincent, yeah. in St. Lucia, and so forth. It, this, is, the, this is the pre preview mm -hmm. of it. And these are not regional people. These are international operatives who can be afforded, whose fees can be afforded. Because we are talking B, not M, in terms of dollars. Right. So, right. so, so understand what we are confronted with. Saint Vincent has an election coming up next year. Guyana has an election coming up next year due to the confidence motion. I guess it has finished playing hopscotch and now. The election has to be called. So when you look at what's happening in Dominica and you have other countries that are preparing for elections one way or another very soon, it, it, it's really very scary, you know. Because... Send kids to that send kids to that list. Yes, oh, yes, yes, send yes. kids yes. to and, 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 and Trinidad up. Trinidad and, and Tobago. Trinidad and Tobago. What? Right. Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, election, so, elections must be held by December 15th in Trinidad. So pay attention to what's going year? on. This year? 2020. 2020, okay. Next year, next year. Right. Mm. Right. So, so there's a perfect quite... storm. Mm -hmm. Perfect storm. And, and the way that we have seen these prime ministers operating <clears throat> over the past few years, anything that one does and wins, the other's going to try and do the same thing. As the last round of elections, we have so many allegations of the elections being stolen mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in similar fashion in, in, in these islands. And now that that cat is out of the bag, and I'm sure that this is so, they're going to be looking for other ways to steal the election because if that is how they know to win, they won't be able to just go to the ballot and let them vote. They won't take that chance. And what one does. This importing of people to vote, look how it, look how it got out of hand. St. Kitts certainly was accused of it. Dominica, as we say in Jamaica, Wasara, Grenade, <laughs> St. Vincent, everybody bringing in people to vote. And then now, as Ati mentioned, you have maybe, for those with the CBI, you probably have a third or a half of your population out there. With passports, I don't know who these people are. That's right. But stop them from coming in to vote. You can't. They are Grenadians or Dominicans or Kittishans, wherever they buy the passport. So we have put ourselves in very dangerous situations as far as our elections are concerned. And I'm glad that in Dominica, the people have really woken up and are determined to do something about it mm -hmm. because we cannot allow. Democracy. It's really not democracy, but we really cannot afford for this system of electing who governs the country. We just can't allow it to fall by the wayside or to be hijacked by people who really do not have the interests of the country at heart. They don't. But isn't it too late? No, it's not too late. It's not too late. Okay. Okay, let me hear. What, okay, here's what I'm thinking. If, for example, you get the people who um, have CDI passports and they decide they, they want to vote to maintain the government, there are enough numbers. They have the numbers. Yeah, especially no, when you give, I, give no. they hold a third of the numbers in um in in Dominica because we're saying they have thirty percent. I mean thirty thousand. And mm -hmm. the population is uh, 60,000, let's say. You know, that, that's that's 30,000 voters. That's and it may even be more than... Um, the legally registered how, how many, voters. Yeah, the legally registered voters. Yeah. And that is what I've been saying. It is but there, there's only one, there's, there's a, a slight consideration which could end up being a major consideration. Mm. Under our laws, and I think the same is true for all of us. Even if you have a passport, yeah. in order to be legally allowed to vote, you have to have been in the country for six months. For six okay. months prior okay. to the event. 
Okay. And, and those that is folks just the one caveat. Have no interest in being here for six months. Uh, yeah, but you know? yeah, but um, that six month thing isn't always followed because no, in the true. case of Grenada, there were people who came in within a week and just voted. They weren't resident there for six months. That's because it, the thing says, you know, don't forget, the thing says once you are registered, mm -hmm. because on the election day, if you walk up to if you walk up to a, a polling station and present that you want to vote, how are they going to prove that you've been there for six months now? But if you're registered well, on the list, they can't stop you. Yeah, you're correct, Jerry, because I'm telling some, you, some some people could have you know various passports. Yes, mm -hmm. you know, and um, yes. that's it. Yeah, yes. you know, End but of game. So you know, I mean, you you very very correct, Jerry, on the spot. Yes, it, it, I, it's not it's not easy. Um, in fact, and and remember, Dominica is still the only country in the region. That doesn't require you to have a voter's ID. Exactly. That's what makes it easier. You can you can come, Richardson, and you can go to a polling station and say, my name is Atherton Martin. I have come to vote. They can challenge no, Athe, you. I think. Yes? Grenada has a voter's ID, but they do not need it to vote. Well. Right. So is it, that, is, it, that's is, it, is it a voter's ID or a national ID? A voter's ID. You get it okay. when you register to vote. So it's I don't need it. No, no, because what came out is that the legislation does not require that you use it to vote. And these are the polls that go into these things that pass through the parliament where the speaker sit down and announce that the eyes have it. And nobody mm -hmm. really reads this thing. It's passed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, but well, there was but a point. With you, but, but, but with you, Bev, Bev, uh, there's second, a way around that. Yeah, but, but Bev, then, Bev, you're correct uh, because what happens, what, what we find happening across all sectors basically is like, especially on the technology side, you take off with technology or you try to implement something, and then down the road you find out that there's like a financial act. That, and, and the old financial act might be in place that says basically you cannot use electronic means to transfer yes. money. Yep. Yes. You know, so, and, and, and then, you know, that, that leads into a whole lot of other things. And, 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 back, and that goes back to the whole de risking issue mm -hmm. as part of it, but that's for another day. Right. So, so you see, you know, as so you know, we use, we use finger dye. You come to vote. You vote, you stick your, your finger in a thing, and you go out and that, that is proof, quote unquote, that you have voted. But people have learned mm -hmm. over the last several decades how to remove that very quickly. Oh, yes. And can walk oh, into yes. a next polling station and, mm -hmm. and vote again and, again and again. So, so in other exactly. words, some form exactly. of proof of having voted. Now, the card presents an, an alternative mechanism, which is you present your card or your identification and your you are checked off against that as mm -hmm. having voted. And that, that right. was, and, and that and that's all. You don't have to put your finger in no ink anymore. However, and they, however, it is true that even if you are challenged by an agent of the other side mm -hmm. as being not that person and, and you don't have the right to vote, you uh, the, the, the presiding officer has, has to offer you the option of are you willing to swear? that you yes. are Richardson Franklin. And if you say yep. yes, so they produce the Bible, and you swear, and you vote, and, and it's, it's up done. to somebody after the election to challenge that That's right. vote mm -hmm. in the yeah, court. Yeah, which is kind of like the same gets, issue in, in Grenada with challenges as well. Same same issue in Grenada. But, but the dangerous thing is, Richardson goes and swears and votes. And then somebody else comes up and say, I'm Richardson Franklin. <laughs> they cannot deny that person. I that was also an issue in That's right, a guy, a guy uh -huh. with a foreign passport, with a foreign boot certificate. <laughs> <laughs> you don't worry. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, you, you know. but you see, you see um, uh, and th this goes back to what I was saying. When you, um, when you raise, Beth, when you raise the whole issue of digital government, and I was saying the only way it can work is if you have full national connectivity. So mm -hmm. technically, if you have an ID card, 
you want once that card is swiped or used, it could act, yes. it actually updates a database. Right. Yeah. That says mm -hmm. Jerry has just voted. You voted. Yeah. Yes. And, and everybody so, can so, see that. Yeah. And and yeah, and, it, and so the database is updated now. Jerry cannot swing back and go go to St. No, George or somewhere and, and vote again. Richie, they don't mm -hmm. want that. That's what I'm just saying. I'm just, no, but I'm just. No, I hear you. I'm just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm hear you. What I'm saying is they mm -hmm. don't want that. That's not what they want. No. They don't want that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let me tell you something. The electoral office in Grenada has set up a beautiful system for counting and closing ballots. Yeah. That system works better than yes. a clock works. No, that's an six. Yeah, it mm -hmm. is an excellent mm -hmm. system built by the guys within the electoral office. It was no source, no foreigner came in and did this. Those guys mm -hmm. developed this, this, this important point for themselves. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think the, two hours, the, region. the polls close at six, mm -hmm. and by eight, eight thirty, you know who will be election. Oh, in election. Done. Yeah. Perfect. Very good. And I believe that they can also put a system in place to be with the voters' list. I know mm -hmm. they can. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. I know they oh, can. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know? But a lot of the pushback against the digital governance, Richardson, it's because of the management systems that this will put in place. Uh, a lot of these, I, I'm going to use another word that you probably may not like, a lot of these crooks in government. These dishonest people do not want systems that we stand balances in place to keep mm -hmm. things orderly. You don't want that at all. We, we know, we know, unfortunately, that we will always have dishonest people to deal with. But because the dishonest people are the ones in control, they do not want these systems at work. And if we don't have these systems at work, how are we going to get better governance? How are we going to get good governance? It's not just dishonest people, you know, Bev, because some of the people who have engineered these, these roadblocks to what would otherwise have been and what otherwise used to be a fairly simple, straightforward um, um, process uh, the, the senior councils and lawyers and so on of our region. We have two senior councils in Dominica who are at the heart of engineering the legal and, and administrative interference with our electoral mm -hmm. process. One right. of them sits on the electoral commission, and the other one is Tony Astafa, mm -hmm. who is who is the the legal advisor and lawyer for the prime minister, and and mm -hmm. and is on record as saying that anything like verification of voters list and cleansing list and id cards will cause the prime minister's legacy of winning to unravel oh jeez he's on record as having said that so oh, right. so i mean these are not just dishonest people you know and dishonest is too much of a nice word to describe <laughs> those kinds of people you know, yeah, you know it, and and that is the challenge we face so mm -hmm. When you ask the question if it's not too late and I respond no, I don't expect no, that to be fixed with this crop of politicians that we currently have in place, you know. But Oh, um, I talked to your men. No, I, that's, I was thinking no, when I answered. No, no, I answered no, no, no okay. because it's, there is no quick fix. We, we, there is no silver bullet, you know. And just like I heard my good friend, Ray Roberts on, on George's program Tuesday. Ray reminded that every single thing came to comes to an end. Nothing lasts forever. So what is happening now with the system of governance being manipulated to suit a few people? It's not going to last. It is going to But I don't I don't buy that. I'll tell you why. Because um, in the process, in the meantime. I can tell you what's happening in Dominica. We're losing our best minds, mm -hmm. our best thinking professionals, even senior professionals and their families, younger professionals and their families. They are leaving. They're out of here. Mm -hmm. So, and, and this is in all fields, agriculture, engineering, computers, education. They, 
they are leaving. And, okay. and so, you know, yeah. so that's a, that, there, there's a long term impact yeah. that has been triggered by the short term action of these people. That is, that, that is true. Mm -hmm. But the system of governance, it has to change and it will change and it is going to change and it will change as long as citizens in the country do not accept it. Those who leave are demonstrating that they do not accept it. But despite the size of the diaspora, you will always have people within the country who are not going to leave for one reason or the other. You know, Beth, we, we need to pay attention to what's going on in the rest of the world. If we want a clue as to what are the options to which we are being reduced. In Honduras, mm -hmm. You know what the people say? You know why the people say they're protesting and fighting against their government? They want a better, a chance for a better life. Mm -hmm. Exactly. They want a chance for a better life. So. You go to and Hong Kong, you go to, to, to all the places around the globe today where people are saying we have no other option but to take to the streets and fight physically with the people who are protecting those who would deny us a chance for a better life. I'm it's afraid that is the reality that was not the case 25 years ago. And you put it, you say it in a way that I would not probably, I, I would not have said it, but it's the same thing. When I talk about those who stay, those who will not leave for one reason or the other. We raise our children, most parents, to, to have a better life. And when these children become young adults and realize that they cannot have this better life because of the system of governance, they will protest. Hong Kong will happen. Mm -hmm. Honduras will happen. Haiti will happen. They will protest because they are being denied the better life, and mm -hmm. and they understand what is happening, and, and they will not stand for it. They will not. Oh. So we have to take our next break, and we will come back and look at the scandal in Grenada. And we're going to close up with customer service. In our part of the world, we need to be prepared for natural disasters like storms and hurricanes, even outside of the season. I'm sure you'll agree that keeping our loved ones, homes, and businesses safe is important. So, I came up with a few quick tips to help you stay safe. First, make a family disaster plan and ensure that everyone in your household is familiar and comfortable with it. Remember to add batteries and flashlights to your emergency kit. Now, for electrical safety. Familiarize yourself with your electrical panel as it may be necessary to switch off the power during a storm or flood. Make sure you install a transfer or isolation switch to prevent your generator feeding electricity to Grenlec's line. If trees are too close to power lines, call Grenlec at 237 for advice. By following these easy steps, you will be well on your way to being hurricane ready. Don't be caught off guard by natural disasters. Prepare now. For more information, visit Grenlec.com. Juve chocolates, cocoa nibs, and cocoa balls from Diamond Estate Grenada are now available at Amazon.com, Amazon.ca, Amazon.co.uk, and GrenadaMarket.com. Try the sensational touch of nutmeg and a touch of ginger chocolates, 75% dark and rich, 100% pure cocoa, and their 60% dark and sweet chocolate bars today. Amazon Prime members enjoy free shipping on these orders in the USA, Canada, and Europe. GrenadaMarket.com when you can't come to the island, the products of the island will come to you.
Can I have a chicken lunch, please? Large. Real nice today. Mm-mm. I don't want that. But well, you just asked for a chicken lunch. I don't have problem with the lunch. I freed the container. Why is the problem with it? These styrofoam containers, they don't go for the environment. They shorten me life. Well, what foolishness are you telling me? So what do you want me to use? Put my food in this. Where you get that? At the food fair, where you could get all biodegradable food boxes and disposable food supplies like cups, plates, anything you could think about. Name it, it's there. And they don't harm the environment. Food fair, taking the lead in cleaning up and protecting the environment. Hey, hey. like you take me advice, you get in your biodegradable food supplies. Well, girl, I supporting who's supporting the environment. That is why I shop in that food fair. Food fair, where you can fill your baskets without emptying your pockets. Products distributed by Hubbard's agency, Kirani James Boulevard. Alrighty, folks, we are back with the usual suspects: Margaret, uh, Jerry, Beverly, uh, Artie, feeding his face and uh, Richardson Franklin. Beverly. Hi, George. <laughs> yes, we want to look at the scandal sheet in Grenada. You know, it's amazing what people accept, you know. It's really, really amazing what people accept. And with the advent of social media, when people can express themselves, you realize why people accept these things. It's because of the thoughts that are expressed when our fellow residents, our neighbors, our friends, and even family come out in defense of certain things. So many times I'm just amazed. I just sit and shake my head. I just look at these things and and they're like, where does the society go if this is how people think? Woman gets knocked over, she's abused, and the society rise up and say, oh, she gets what she was looking for. She had no because she had no business here. It's okay to knock her over, you know. My goodness, you hear some horrible things come out of people. And you really sit and say, you know, these are the kind of thoughts that breed the kind of actions that we see in the society. And a lot of people will jump up and be so self-righteous when certain things happen. But it starts in the mind when someone goes out and kills someone and read somebody that thought starts in the mind you know and when you come to social media and express support for wrongdoing and for wickedness and believe it's justified because of whatever you want to use to justify it it's just contributing to the degradation in the society and it's really and truly very sad and i talk about i say all that to say there are so many things happening affecting the governance in Grenada. But it doesn't seem to bother a lot of people at all. I am glad that there are a few who speak about it. But for the most part, you know, people, people don't care. What's the big deal? You have a young man by the name of Sheldon Scott, who is part of the scandal sheet. He is a member of the party which now forms the government. And I always have to say this, you know, people who follow parties and who support parties won't understand and they won't get it. Me, Beverly Sinclair, I don't care which party forms the government. What I care about is good governance. That is all I care about. I don't really care. And that is why I don't advocate for political parties. They are too divisive in their nature. Yep. You know, so I don't care. So this young man is a member of the party which now forms the government. And his name 
was called in a scandal, which was dubbed cell phone gate because of the money billed to taxpayers. I don't know if it was paid, but it was certainly billed to taxpayers for his excessive phone bills, which he was not entitled to and which should not have been there over a three-year period. People defend that part of the scandal sheet. Then again, this same young man, the only newspaper that does some real news in Benin, I would say, in him today, unearthed the story that he had a debt to a bank. And when things are in court, it's public matter. You can go in there and get whatever information you want out of the court. It's, it's public information. You know, all you have to do is pay for your copies if you want them or anything. But you just can't be denied going into the court and looking at whatever was filed or any judgments or anything like that. And that is where the information came from, court documents. So he also has a debt to the bank, which the bank had to sue him to collect. So it gives, you know, it sets a pattern. You say once is an accident, twice is deliberate. But to have had your phone bill to taxpayers for a period of three years, and you know you're not supposed to be there. And then again, to be demonstrated, for it to be demonstrated that, you know, you, you, I don't know the circumstances, I don't know the reasons, but your business with the bank gets so bad that the bank has to sue. It, it demonstrates a type of character that you really don't want in governance. You don't. And that is part of the scandal sheet, but people will defend it because everything comes from a political angle. And as long as you support a political party, somehow you can't seem to say that anything they do is not right. Just like in Dominica, the people who support the party which now forms the government will find all kinds of excuses about the, the, the billions of dollars that's missing. You're not supposed to say it's because of bad governance or dishonest in governance or as my good friend and we would just say them teeth. You know, you're not supposed to because it's a party you're supposed to. You can't say anything bad about it. And again, contributes to the degradation and undermining what is good governance. And I don't know if any of you guys got to look through the scandal sheet and the stuff which is there, but it's not pretty. It is absolutely not pretty. And we as a people, as a nation, we just cannot continue to sit back and accept these things from the people who are supposed to be governing the country. We can't. Or we will have a nation of thieves and crooks. And instead of building schools, we just have to build more prisons. And I don't know who going to man the prisons because when everybody is crook, from the people in governance, the people in police, the people in the, in the judiciary, who go lock up who, you know? Who is going to enforce the law and see to it that law and order is maintained? The Prime Minister sits down and he say, oh, there is a law, but I. Oh, yes, I know there is a law, but I. And you know? And people sit hmm. down and accept it. Yeah. They don't understand that when you let the genie out of the bottle, it cannot go back in. It cannot go back in. And it's funny, I was watching this trailer from one of these, you know, cartoon movies with the genie. And, and the, the genie is out of the bottle. And the, the guy said to the genie, um, Mr. Genie, make me a prince. And the genie says, oh, you know, that could be interpreted in so many ways. <laughs> I just had to laugh, you know. But the, the point is, once the genie is out, you can't let it back in. I mean, you tell the genie to make you a prince, and the genie interprets it how he wants and does what he wants, and then you get something that you didn't want. You can't fix it. It cannot go back. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, yes. uh, I mean, we, I don't know, I don't know if we, realize how how much we have damaged our our caribbean societies <clears throat> i am just reading here a letter which is the official letter hand coming from the prime minister of dominica to persons who are being 
given homes built by that those same millions yeah, of I dollars. Saw that. I saw that. You saw that, um, Jerry? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it it, it is it, it is staggering right. that I mean, a civil I believe that what I was reading it that 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 a civil servant somewhere in mm -hmm. the system was able to draft such a letter, mm -hmm. which is such designed to hoodwink to fool people into believing that they are in fact receiving ownership over an asset when in fact there is no such thing. We had attorneys across the political spectrum look at this letter and not one of them considered this an Ati, ownership document. Ati, why you mm -hmm. think it was drafted? They probably, they probably, it was dictated to these. Well, it, it, drafted not, or dictated. Well, whether, whether dictated or not, but for it to go off on the official letterhead of the office of the prime minister and over the signature of the honorable prime minister, is it, it yeah. speaks to how low we have got in terms of the disrespect to each other. Yes, absolutely. And, 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 and disrespect for the civil but service. But, wait, yeah. but just and to bring the listeners up to date, because they may not know, the gist of the letter is that it says, Dear Mr. So-and-so, we are pleased to announce, we are pleased to inform you that you have received a house in our housing program. And then the letter closes by saying, I just remember this passage in, in, in Job that the Lord gave and he took away. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 I saw that. <laughs> and that's the letter they are giving to people that they give their houses. So it's yeah. going to be a very... They're, they're telling people on the, on the political platform that you own the house, the house is yours. You know, yeah. that it, it, and it then, is not. And then they give you a letter where the subtle message is it can be taken away from you. From you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, it, it, that's why I say this, this, this has to be brought to a halt. This is, this, this is like pollution, you know? Every day you, you delay to, in, in doing something to stop it, it, it gets worse. That's why, you know, that, that, that material you sent us, Richardson, relating to the Eastern Caribbean and our role well, what what an accolade eh, for us to hear it as being the worst polluters in terms of plastic in the world on a per capita basis. Mm -hmm. My goodness. My yeah. goodness. Yeah. We are and we are asking people to come here to do for a vacation and for to enjoy themselves and to get well again and, and, and relax. Well, and we and are, in the midst of that, in the midst of that, we have the nature island Grenada. We have the nature mm -hmm. island. Dominica, yes. have yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know? So, so it, it, it that's why something has to happen to wake us up. Either so, either kick him, Jenny has to get up and kick Jenny, and, and, and <laughs> kick Jack. So, <laughs> no, I don't think you want that. I mean, kick I don't Jack. think you want that at all. I, I, I not, I not wishing any I, anything I see, bad I on my partner. You, you want to, you want to wipe out half of my ancestral home ground. Right? No, 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 no. <laughs> I just say, but, when but it, just when it, when it going off is is there by such as go over there, you know. Yeah, yeah man. It's, it's oh, for a good man. cause, Richie. It's for a good cause. Yeah, <laughs> and the Franklin's, and you, and you the know, Franklin's lay in the cemetery up there, you know. So. Okay, okay. I mean, but... Uh, maybe it's on, a good you know. time to relocate them. Yeah. We have nine volcanoes here. Maybe we should just choose one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. And when, when you look at it, and especially with that CBI program, because we have the CBI program in Grenada on the scandal sheet as well. Uh-huh, yes. In, in Liberia, which has been going on for maybe about 15 years. Mm -hmm. It's part of maybe three or four different owners. Mm -hmm. And right now it's in court because the two last owners, and I put those in quotation mark, one is suing the other because one says the property that was given to them for the development, the other one sold it. 
So they want how much million dollars from this other one? Because how, much, how much do they want? Let me put this in perspective. How much do they want? What are they suing for? What it is what ninety something million dollars? That you said you said given to them. Let me see if I, yeah, and there's some arrangement with the government because the government mm -hmm. can acquire people's land, and the price for it to be sold was supposed to be so much. Mm -hmm. And my understanding is that they were not paying for the land, mm -hmm. so somewhere in all that mess, the land had new owners and now there is this lawsuit where one okay. is the other because <clears throat> the land was sold to them and they won't buy their money. I can't find the figure right now at the but I think okay. it's all oh, it's all right. It's all right. I just trying to see how they compare million. with our our Kempinski <laughs> range Zampoli <laughs> but, but that, is, that that is only one <laughs> you know that is only that is only one. Because there are others, you know, it's a mm -hmm. Right, right. And the, the, you know, the, also yep. on the scandal sheet is that mm -hmm. government senators, government senator in particular, want to prevent journalists from asking questions when they go to the so-called post-cabinet, weekly post-cabinet briefing, which is becoming a sham. Yeah. I have to yeah. praise the government, you know, I have to praise the elected officials that every Tuesday they had cabinet meeting on Monday yeah. and every Tuesday they would have a post cabinet meeting and any one of the ministers would host the, the, the briefing an opportunity for media people to go do the interviews get the news whatever now it has become a lecture media people are supposed to go and sit down and let, <laughs> and let the, the elected officials report to them whatever they want to report. Mm. And if they have any questions to ask on what was reported, you ask the question on what was reported and you can't do any private interviews with the ministers again. You can't call them one away and do any interviews because you have between the press secretary and the senator. All of that, you know, it is under attack. And people sit back and accept these things and don't realize that the, the, the dangerous ground that we are treading on, when the, the media does not meet, people in the media do not have freedom to do their work. Yeah, but the media shouldn't be there. If the media is being denied opportunity to ask questions, do not go to the conference. And you so see, that is where it has to stop. If they refuse to go, who are they talking to? You know, I, I, I fully agree. When the incident happened, there was this incident when the senator tried to, not try to, actually prevented the reporter from asking a question of the elected member of parliament about her constituency, about the people she's elected to represent. And the senator jumped in. The, the reporter ended up on the floor. Not one media house carried the story, none. But then a week well, later, you go. but then a week later, the senior minister, because the one who knocked her over is a, is a senator, he's not elected. The elected, no, that other one not elected either. But anyway, the senior minister in the ministry came out and put out some highfalutin statement that they did an investigation and concluded that there was. No, no confrontation happened. When the but you know, can I can, can and, I can I say that, no, that's not the joke of it, that thing. None of the media houses carried a story about the incident. Yeah. But okay. when the senator come and put out this statement, everybody carried a statement. True, true. Yeah, no, you know? did you see the see the recent exchange between Donald Trump and the Reuters reporter at the White at the White House press conference? Yes, I saw it. Exactly. Okay. I saw it. That I is. Saw it. To, I, I don't agree with you, Jerry. I don't agree. I think y'all should go and y'all should embarrass them. Y'all should insist. Well, y'all should harangue them and and make make a noise. Mm -hmm. Don't well, walk yes, away. They I, want you to walk away. I think, Bev, interestingly, is is um, you had a NNP supporter, a strong supporter of that. I mean, if you heard um, Kenny's comments where he classified the senator as um, secret police. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, he would know, having had experience with mm -hmm. secret police, 
And okay. his making that statement is not a light statement to describe that senator. Okay. Yeah. You know? I, 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 and I and he's, he's but saying actually, that. Here's why I differ. Here's why I differ. Mm -hmm. If you went and made noise and did the answer, what's the point? You have to force to embarrass them is not to be there. Let them come to a press conference and there is nobody. Let them talk to themselves because it is supposed to be a press briefing. And if they come to a press briefing and there's nobody there, who are they briefing? That's, it. That's how you get their attention. Or right? they could probably repeat something they did in the past. Didn't they um, do that lip thing where they, lip they, went, they went in and um, taped their lips or something like that? Yeah, yeah, something yeah, like that. Was, exactly. Yeah, so it was a they went in and yeah, what, and they, they, they had they, yeah, they remained silent. Uh, yeah, duct tape, the duct tape yeah. on the on the lips. No, well, even it even that is better than walking away, Jerry. Mm -hmm. I, I, yeah. no, no, I don't believe I, I, in I giving like up space I, I, like that. Don't give up the space, bro. Well, I get don't your, give up the space. I get your point. I yeah. get your point, but I mean, being there and yeah, being and, and I, I like the suggestion. I like Afi's suggestion. Like Afi's suggestion too. But I also like the boycott, you know? Mm -hmm. Would love for there to be called a post-cabinet press briefing. And when, when they keep looking and where's the media, nobody turns up. Nobody. Would, mm -hmm. But yeah, in our circumstances, don't they control most of the media? Because doesn't well, the government the control thing. a lot of the media? That's the problem. Well, so, the so it doesn't matter and whether you go or not, so go. And, and make a you noise. <laughs> Create the news. Don't report it. You see, and yeah, this is yeah. and this this is this is the other thing, I think. Yes. The government. Well, you have the government information service, which belongs to the government. GIS is supposed to do what GIS is supposed Does. to do. Does. Mm -hmm. But then you have what are supposed to be independent media houses. That mm -hmm. will if they understand what they, they are supposed to be doing. You have, you, have, you have one media house which once upon a time was a state-owned media house and people don't understand what a state-owned media house is. BBC is state-owned. Mm -hmm. Now that's an example of a state-owned That's right. Mm -hmm. And one of these media houses is state-owned, the other one is private. And when you look at the news that comes out of them sometimes, you, mm -hmm, can't, mm -hmm. you can't tell them any difference. Can't tell the difference. <laughs> they all do the same thing. They all yeah, do the yeah. same thing. Maybe the private one copies the state one. On. <laughs> you know, I don't know who is copying who. And you hear reports from some of these reporters about stories that cannot go and stories that get killed and some of the things that happen inside. And you wonder what is happening. And it's mm -hmm. impacts on the governance because if the media, the only entity that can really hold people governing officials to the fire, can call them out and say, you sat here last week and you told us so and so. Because it's mm -hmm. like, no, I heard the Minister of Legal Affairs promise that courthouses would be ready for the 30th of September for people to work. Hard deadline. 30th of September, come and go, ain't no courthouse. Mm -hmm. You see, one little court squatting in the parliament building a civil court at that. So that is all the court which is sitting. I mean, our court catching the tail to hear two cases. A size is supposed to open. And I don't know if they hear one criminal case yet since the size is open, you know, and so many things happening. We hear to court it. Anybody go back and say, well, the 30th of September has passed, walk to the courthouse. Furthermore, the courthouses are being set up in the clique or bike or building. And up to mm -hmm. now, one reporter asked, what is the arrangement? Is this rent? Who owns it? Is this rent going to be paid to Kiko Baiko? Who owns that building? What is the arrangement? Well, you see, uh, some... Yes, some George. George, George, George. Yeah, I just want to go back here to the media issue for a minute uh, in the interest of uh, accuracy. Um, it is my understanding that what the government is insisting is that reporters Reporters are not being told they can't ask questions. They are being told 
that you're only going to ask questions about what the minister is there to answer, what the minister has up his sleeve. That's, that's what you're going to talk about. Mm -hmm. Now, okay. the reason why the press briefing is so important is because, like you pointed out, ministers are not as accessible as they should be to the media. There are a lot of questions the media have, but unfortunately they're not being answered. You try to reach these ministers, you can go on a wild goose chase until the end of time, <laughs> you ain't going to get answers. And when you get answers, they aren't necessarily accurate, okay? So the media usually mm -hmm. takes the opportunity of the press cabinet, the post cabinet briefing to ask questions. Now, it's interesting to note that up until last week, these post cabinet briefings have been going on for a long time, but never were you told what the ministers were coming to discuss. You were sent a, uh, an invitation to attend a post cabinet briefing saying that Arthurton Martin is going to be uh, facilitating the post-cabinet briefing. You're not told what he's there to talk about, so you can't prepare. You don't know what the heck you're going to ask, so you grab the opportunity. But now, this past week, I mean, they sent out, they sent out uh, uh, an invitation with a long list of things that you can ask questions about. The other thing I wanted to point out is that... Uh, so, George, George, one second. Yeah. George, before you go. So, they send a list about what you can ask about. So, basically, you cannot ask anything outside of that list. Right. That's... Really no. <laughs> really no. <laughs> really no, Jerry. Really no. Okay. And every time I be asking something outside of that list. <laughs> okay. Oh, gosh. Um, it was also the issue about whether the reporter was knocked down. I don't think it's fair to say that she was knocked down, um, unless I interpreted what no. you were saying inaccurately. But uh, because I mean, no, 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 I, no. Sorry, George. We didn't say she was knocked down. We said she ended up on the floor. Okay, because she she herself has not said that she was pushed or anything no, of that didn't. nature. Okay, and I she understand didn't. that a number of reporters who were at the post cabinet briefing said that they saw no such thing happen. All right, but somehow she wound up on the floor. And the mm -hmm. photograph that's been circulating in social media and on television, I mean, that, that proves that the woman was on the floor. We, we saw that, no question there. Somebody here on uh, Facebook tonight is also yeah. raising the point about the fake doctrine mm -hmm. of that particular mm -hmm. junior mm -hmm. minister. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, and before you get to that, before you mm -hmm. get to that, mm -hmm. I think it's also important to note that this junior minister was mm -hmm. instructing a minister who is superior to him mm -hmm. not to answer questions. I mean, come on now. Jerry, really? <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> you want to take up the postdoctorate no. uh, issue, Beth? <laughs> oh, postdoctorate or honorary doctorate? Um, it's, it's, sorry, it's not postdoctorate, sorry. Yeah, the honorary doctorate. <laughs> right. The, the senator in question, he has a doctorate or more around which a lot of questions have been raised because the institution that issued it is under investigation for issuing all of these doctorates to, to politicians all over the world. The institution, it's an online institution, so it doesn't exist anywhere in cyberspace. We can encourage that. We can, we can encourage people, that. I think at the best of me too. Yeah, yeah I think it's a mute. I think, I think he, he does um, not have any. He does not he have, have his, uh, his headphones, head yeah. head so he's mm -hmm. not hearing us. All right, but we're we can't hearing him. Right. So the, the, the fake, yeah. he does not have his headphones, so he's not going to hear us. Let me, let me show it to you. Yeah. Right, so the fake doctorate came up again, and again it speaks to the nature of the people that we have in governance and why the governance is so troubled. 
because if you have people are going to be accepting doctorates from suspect institutions you know and parading it as if it is something good it speaks to character and what is it telling you that you can just go and do what you want as long as it is something to powder your face and 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 make you feel pretty and look nice no and people accept these things and defend it and pretend that it is good without realizing that we are supporting the degradation of governance in this country. And if you believe just because it is, no. You're able to pay your bills, you're able to buy your food, because all of a sudden going to the supermarket is something to show off on your neighbor with. I could never ever believe societies would get to this stage where instead of going out if your neighbor hungry and sharing out sharing what you have with them, it is something to show up with. Yep. Look, I go to yep. the supermarket, I can buy twenty bags of grocery and is, is and all of and you us can't buy there. none. Yeah, and you can't buy none. And I'm going to go fix up my locks and all of that. And they don't care if all of this is, is acquired through dishonesty. You see, the thief is as bad as the upholder. Mm. Through dishonesty. And the fact that it is degrading the society, people comfortable, they don't care. But it has to stop and it has to change. Mm. Yep. I tell you, we have a long scandal sheet here in Grenada. We have a long scandal sheet in Dominica. We have a long scandal sheet in St. Vincent. And St. Vincent scandal sheet is headed with all of these rape allegations against the Prime Minister. Again? Again? Old ones, yeah, new, new ones? Old ones. Old ones. There are no new, there are no new ones that I know. Old ones and new ones. Yeah. Well, the, the, old... the whole red thing came up because there was this address to teachers at the beginning of the term by one of the country psychologists to say to teachers that because in the schools like just a couple of weeks ago we had a story where some 10, 10 boys one girl yeah a gang rape was school, in school in school so she was trying to get them to understand that um that that is something they need to be vigilant about and did that create the uproar in fact the young psychologist this, this was actually first outing a first public outing really and she was traduced, and, and she put how she felt on her Facebook page. Um, people said that, oh, she was colluding with the, with the opposition because of the things she brought. So the whole question of rape has become a, a, a big a issue. Political, again, a hmm. political issue. A yeah, polit it's a political issue. issue. It's a political you know, issue. because the prime minister has had rape allegations thrown at him. So the moment you talk about rape... That's why people defend her. Yeah, but did you, you could, you could, and you, and you could see why the behavior patterns continue because mm -hmm. you when somebody speaks out against it and say, look, we need to take steps to arrest the situation, rather than people acknowledging that there is a there is a problem and let's deal with the problem. What they do is attack the messenger. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're going, they're going yeah. to the mode because the one thing they don't want you to talk about is rape, because. Right. The Prime Minister had at least two significant accusations. And one of them, the, 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 the PP Nolly Frost. So the matter has never been ventilated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And worse than that, I think really what made it worse was that there was a big rally in support, led by women, in support of the Prime Minister, and that is famously dubbed in St. Vincent a rape rally. Wow. So with mm -hmm. all of that as background, yeah. Anytime you speak of rape and Vincent, people feel that you are getting at the Prime Minister, which is sad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we've had some nasty cases, some some yeah. really nasty cases. You know? And it is similar to when that report was done about Grenada and the whole issue of child abuse. Mm -hmm. And the country would have yeah. four producers documentary apart. And yet still, these same hypocrites will come and jump up and make noise about, oh, we need to deal with child abuse. And when that little girl, which is still mm -hmm. so difficult to think about, when she got killed and we turn her way home from school, they all in motorcade, going around, running them mm -hmm. out, making noise. But 
and the document was made about how systemic child abuse is in Grenada. All of them vex, you know, you're making the country look Yeah, bad it also comes well. down to this argument that you're painting the country in a bad light. Yeah, yes. which is not so you're, absolute nonsense. Yeah, so you, so you cover up everything that is going to make the country look bad. Sweep it under a rug and put a nice pretty rub over it and pretend it doesn't exist and put on this facade and continue to allow people to suffer because you don't want to look bad, you know? But that, that is what, that is what um, Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley got himself involved in a couple of weeks ago. He thought the BBC report was something that he needed to defend, right? So he got sucked into the very same thing um, that people know he did, he did, was he right or wrong is not the issue because I think what actually happened is the way he went about the, 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 uh, the defense of it. And mm -hmm. if you notice that it has just been dropped because it really was not the correct approach, but that's what we have. People just mm -hmm. put up defense when something like this comes up. Yeah, you know, and because of that, the real issue does not get tackled. When yeah. this doctor about child abuse came up in, in Grenada, if people were serious about dealing with it, they should have jumped at the information, you know, it, it, it is not a secret that most child, most child abuse happens within families, families, relatives, close friends. You know, you hardly smaller number of cases where children are abused by strangers. It's usually by people they know. You know? Mm -hmm. But a lot of these people that they know are some of these same highfalutin people in society who go out there and pretend to be something that they are not. But you know, my question, folks, is, is there any good news anywhere in our region? No, it's, it's, it's a serious question. Where is the good news? Honestly, honestly, where is the good news? There must be good news. I consider what yes. happened here on Monday good news. Yes, that is good news. So, that's how you interpret it, exactly. Other people, yeah. other people look at it. It is bad news. Yeah. So again, yeah. it's a question of interpretation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I see, I see a lot of good when I see, especially the youth come out and talk about their hopes and aspirations, and even beyond that, their achievements. Yeah. And, yeah. and I saw in an interview this week, he's a math teacher, and he talks about his journey from packing bags in the supermarket. Mm -hmm. to he eventually came to fulfill his dream of being a math teacher and to talk about the dreams he now has, he, the dreams he now have beyond that, what he, what he wants to acquire and the changes he wants to do and how he wants to work with young men. Those things just warm the cockles of my heart and it gives me, it gives me hope that the journey to come will not be as selfish but, but as the one that we are currently living in. We keep missing so many opportunities. For example, you remember Usain Bolt? You remember who that was? Oh, yeah. His name you has know? been called a lot this week. Since the All right. And it was, yeah. it was, right, OK. But you know who, who really makes sure that Usain Bolt's name doesn't get lost? Non-Caribbeans, by and large. There are a few that kind of, it, it's, it's like our, our major cricketers. I mean, do we expose our youth to what could be some really interesting role models, you know, in, in the sporting world, in the music world, in the engineering world? I mean, where, where are the programs that, that give the next generation hope? That say, you know, I could be like this guy, or I could be like this lady, I could be like this... You know, I mean, where where is that? And, and I'm, I don't mean just at the national level, because really, we 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 really push in the envelope to think of our countries as nations, really. Ati, yeah, Ati, could you believe it? Could you believe it, Ati, that at this stage, Desmond Haynes is routing for position to be coach at the West Indies team? Yeah, I, I mean, look that's how many what years I mean. removed? Look how many years removed? Well, Desmond Haynes should naturally have been moved into that position. Absolutely. When those guys came through the end, they just dumped them. I will yes. never forget Marshall coaching, um, going off to England to coach Dominic Parr to come back and give us trouble. Mm -hmm. He should have been, the, and that is why we have lost connection. 
Yeah, with, yeah, with, yeah with, it's, it's, it's fast. But, 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 but Jerry and, and our best cricketer today now plays for England. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. But Archer. Archer, yeah. 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 yes. The Caribbean's so, so, best so, cricketer. I mean, we, yeah. we, we, something is wrong with us. We, we just seem to have this concept. And we see people in business and the workplaces, uh, in government. We just want people, people come to retirement that when they have their best value, we dump yeah, them because I mean, we have some young person to put into the position. And we take I mean, all of this experience and just yeah. throw it out. And in contrast, I was watching a game today, um, Arsenal, and they had all their past players, yes. heroes, lined up, guys in their 60s it's and sucking. 70s, still there and saying, hey, and, and remembering but, uh, the day. We don't do that. Why yeah, do I mean, I, I show Richie because he follows that stuff more than I do. But I mean, you kind of like see the same thing here at baseball. Yes. They tend to bring out their old people, what, at the start of the season, Richie, or whatever? They do well, that. Well, today, yeah. today, the New York Mets had uh, Ed Crane, Pool and Tom yeah. Seager. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, they, and these so they, guys, they, they, they. I hadn't heard about these guys since I came here in 73. Yeah. There you go. You know, and and they rule them out. Them. Them. Yeah. We, but, but we, soon as we why get ready, we, we just let them go. Why don't no, but, but do if, that? If you look, if you look at the, if you look at the region, though, especially when it comes to sports, yes. For, as far as I understand, having spoken to West Indies, former West Indies players, some of them are still old money, but by, by the WICBC, you know, the, the yeah. board of control. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, come on. You know, man. so come so on. you know, when you have a name like that, off control. Bev, I know you like that that last the last two off control. You know, I mean, that, that's you know, I mean, you know, come on. You know, it does But mentality. um, you know, I think it goes back to something that we have spoken about over and over. Um, the fact that we don't have for a, a sort of CNN of the Caribbean. Yeah, that's where we can hear what's happening and share one another stories. Mm -hmm. And I think communication is very important and, and mm -hmm. things. I mean, when you look yeah. at the media here, yeah. um, they never hesitate to promote their own absolutely. over and over and over. And as they should, rightly so. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and absolutely. I think, absolutely. but, you know, they have the forum. They have national networks and, and what else. We don't have that. But with so, all the technology available, you don't think we can do that? No, no, but, sure but, we but can. I think nobody but, wants to do that. Nobody. Yeah. Why? People, see? Why? No, so, but hold on, hold on. The no, reality, the reality on, is a, a very few people care. Very no, few people even, care. Even with the technology, it mm -hmm. takes resources. Thank you, Bev. Even so. You know, and, and, so. The thing, and the thing with the resources, Bev, is that if you look at it, you look at funding of the regional agencies and see who's doing all the funding and see who's Outsiders. not funding. No, Outsiders. and it's not, just, it's not just funding either. Critical resource is personnel. Well, that, you know, you know, I, know that, that I mean, you, you with the, in the region. <laughs> yeah, with funding, you could recruit and train proper personnel to have a region, a Caribbean regional news network. It, it is a vision that I personally have, and I know exactly what it would take to build it out. So the technology is there. Some basic things are already in place, but that is an operation which has to be properly resourced, including the do, do we Do I can, like, go back? To, to the Kana days where you had Kana and for some reason, you know, they just allow that to, yeah, which but, could have been built out into, yes, exactly. into something else. But, because but again, Kana, you go back to funding. How, how do you think? Yeah. No, well, you see, Kana was started on funding that we received from outside from, the region. Yeah. When, exactly. the funding, when the funding was funding finished, Kana was finished. Gone. Radio Antilles was funded by, mm -hmm. by the Germans. By the Germans. When they pulled out, we were finished. West Indies cricket was we had we had sponsorship of our players going to England to play in the English league. When they stopped us, our cricket died. This, this yeah, is just but, 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 but we yeah. are not investing in ourselves. Ourselves, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. Meanwhile, and, uh, no, let's go back to the start. Hold on, let's go back to this start. 
let's go back to the start of CNN, right? When CNN started, it was it, it was a, a business. Chicken noodle deal. network. When my <laughs> chicken noodle network. No, no, no. I mean, I'm not saying that to you. Know, that's how they regarded CNN. No, no, I know. Yeah. But I'm going to tell you, he had eight million viewers in the whole of the United States. If you really do the math, in 300 million people, eight million people is like nothing, right? Mm -hmm. But he understood the need to make it not just a communication, but a business building network. That's where the advertising came in. Mm. That's how the business came. And from mm -hmm. there, it grew. In the Caribbean, that's the problem. You go to, you go to a business to talk about, about sponsorship. Oh, you see, you just deal with, with politics, and, and, and we don't deal with politics. Mm -hmm. All these foolish anyway, excuses. Stick, but these are the same people. Hold field. on. Let me finish this. Look, hold on. Let me finish this point. These are the same people who will sit down and look at 60 Minutes. <laughs> TV glued on MNSBC. But when you go to them, they tell you, you see, you just deal with politics and, <laughs> and our business don't support that. The hypocrisy of our region is why we're here. We're here. Okay. All right. All right. We have eight minutes left. And we did say... Mm -hmm. Next week is customer service week. And I want to hear from all the suspects, you know, but we have to nutshell it. A little peeve with customer service in the region and what we think should be done about it. And is, is customer service spelled C U S S? <laughs> and, and, and we're talking about customer service both in the in the public and the private sector. <laughs> I'll give you a joke I had recently. Um, my lovely daughter and I, you know, we wanted something inside a store. And I know it's one of these doors that you have to buzz to go in. So we store and buzz. And the lady inside, she just hold up her food and show us and said, mm -mm. I'm fine, thank you, Uranga. You got it clear. <laughs> <Not, no. laughs> we had a good laugh. <laughs> not, not good. Like, you food? Is she serious? Of course she was serious. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> not interrupting lunch. Not interrupting lunch at all. Take your business elsewhere. Have a nice day. Let, let me start mine, if I should say. I think there's, <laughs> in customer service, there is still a lack of translation between um, the old methods and the new methods, the online methods and the face-to-face -face methods. We haven't bridged that gap. Let me, let, me, let me give you one illustration, because I've three of them that I plan to use on a different program. So... Oh, gosh, I think Jerry's frozen. Yeah, seven frozen. minutes, Jerry. Frozen. Yeah. Next. No, but no, but very quick. As far as customer service, I stopped flying BWIA because one day there was this little rasta boy from Tree Canal, who I saw treated people like pigs at the at BW office, and and, and wow. then you on the, and and you're on the flight now. You know, no, I'm saying BW because that's what it was. And you're, you're on the flight now, and these, and these stewardesses, I mean, they figure they're better than you. And that was it. I, I switched, and I, and I do not fly that airline at all. And I make no bones about it, you know. And, and that's, that's the problem with service across the region, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. public and private. Although I must say, when you go to the big malls in Trinidad, owned by our Syrian friends, the, 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 the customer service is excellent. You know, but the other businesses owned by people who look like us, sorry. <laughs> and especially when there's the people who look like us. And they you pull out a few greenbacks, no worse mm -hmm. yet. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, 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 Margaret. Wait. No, I, I, I think I could, I could um, side with Richie on that Caribbean Airlines thing because I had my own share with them. And actually, I watched them deny me service that they allowed somebody who didn't look like me mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. the same service to go on. Yeah. So, um, and, I, and I've seen that happen in other situations as well, because I, I had that happen to me I mean, at the airport. I think the airports in the Caribbean is one of the places where you can find the rudest set of people there is. 
And I think what people fail to realize, I mean, for people like you and I, we could argue, well, you know, we're going home, we are accustomed to that. Not that we should accept it, but, you know, we could think that. But what these people need to realize that when a visitor comes to your country, particularly if it's their first time, you are their first impression of that country. Mm -hmm. And so when you are rude and obnoxious and everything else that goes with it, you only tell that person that this is a rude, obnoxious country. But, but, yeah, they exactly. but, but, but they, they're not rude and obnoxious to the visitors. They, well, to certain visitors. They don't look eh? like us. They're, exactly. They're, they're, yeah, they're that's rude correct. and obnoxious to yeah. us. No, and, no, and, my favorite, and, and, that, and that happens very often in, in, um, in, in, in that, that, that culturally Caribbean country, but not necessarily geographically Caribbean. I'm not going to call the name. Right. No, 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 no. One of the things when I worked in, and Beva, sorry to cut that, but when I worked in national security in Trinidad, I always try to keep it, uh, the, you know, who you are and that type of thing. And one morning I was dropping a friend, a friend wife off at the, at the Piaco, and she had two little babies. And we, we get to, to um, go through security. And this young lady decided to treat this woman and her, her children like, like dude. And it's only then that I had to pull my ranks and pull out my badge. Mm -hmm. I said, do you know who you are speaking to? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and on that basis, she boiled down immediately. But why must you have to go so far with these exactly. people? Exactly. No, you know? and especially the airports in the Caribbean, they are mm -hmm. not curious, mm -hmm. but black people like like we, we, we don't exist you know it's not the same money we paying to fly like what the white people paying paying mm -hmm. to fly you know they are notorious and and that place you mentioned margaret which shall remain nameless mm -hmm. is the chief of discrimination mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in the caribbean you know but, but blatantly so and it's a lack of training in customer service and a lack of management of the customer service area in the business. And we have to give Aki his two cents in the last two minutes. I, 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 I have three good news stories. <laughs> um, Singapore, Kuala Lumpur, and, um, and Seychelles. Three places that I've been to several times and um, and top-notch, top-quality, personalized service mm. at every point, okay. right? At every point. And, and, and when I went into the societies, I was, I was there for some time, I saw the same behavior. So my thing on customer service if you if you leave your custom good customer service at the door when you when you leave work, that's not customer service. No, oh no. Customer service no. has to be a way of life. Culture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If it is not, it's a sham. Mm -hmm. It's just it's a, it's, a, it's a hypocrisy and it's an embarrassment to the culture that we claim mm -hmm. to be a part of. So we have to make it exactly. how, how we how we live. Mm -hmm. And okay. in those three places I mentioned. I can vouch that actually do, those people live customer service. Right. And, and that's why, that's why you know, I hear all of this thing about the training, but I'm sorry. Yeah, I... I the, the, the training, most, the training is necessary, you know, because it is through the training, you're going to find those who have it and those who don't. No, the, the example, the setting of example is more important, mm -hmm. important. than the yeah, training. Yeah, 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 yeah. The people have to look around them and see people behaving well and respectful mm -hmm. to each other, mm -hmm. and then they will they will understand it. That is their training. Quick, quick one. Quick, quick one. Our nurses, our, our nurses in the hospitals in the Caribbean come to New York and, and, and these places and see how much different they are than how they were when they were in the Caribbean. And we'll see it if they're out here someplace like New Jersey, where, the, where the, their customers don't look like us. You'll see how, how well yeah, they yeah, behave um, there. Yeah, I, 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 I agree with you. I, I want to say on that, it really depends on the institution here. Because in King's I, all I'm saying, yeah, all yeah, I'm yeah. saying is, oh, all I'm saying is, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. All I'm saying, yeah, all I'm saying is, is that when they deal with people who don't look like themselves, is that a difference? They, 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 and that's the problem. We do not like ourselves. Many of us do not like ourselves. We Sadly. don't like what we see in the mirror. Sadly. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. no, my quick wrap is that I made a point that we have to we have to make um, we have to we have to realize that customer service is no longer face to face. It has also an online aspect, but. I guess when we do that next time, I'll get a chance to speak more on that issue. But having said all of that, I want to thank all of you for suspects for being here this evening and for once again making this program, I, I suspect, very informative, very educational, hopefully inspirational. To all of you, thanks for joining us once again for this edition of Let Me Chat.